Major, here now. How you doing? I'm Chris Ignato. You're watching Nature Here and Now, and while well, you're about to watch me crash and burn as I probably anger some of my viewers, because this video is about is about Mammatus clouds, and they get their name after, well, the mammary glands on the female persuasion of Homo sapiens. Somebody back in the day was like, I know what that looks like, and named them after it. And so now, please bear with me as I do my best to explain what this rare cloud formation actually means, whether or not they're dangerous, and the conflicting science behind how these clouds are actually formed. They are incredible looking. <laughs> Here it goes. So, let me take you back to June, when it was nice and warm, rather contrasting to the thermic activity right now. I am freezing my gluteus maximus off. I'm not even kidding. Uh, back in June, nice day, some turbulent atmospheric activity going on with precipitation and whatnot, and it starts getting late in the day. I peer out the window, and I see basically the embryonic stage of what are known as mammatus clouds. And I got super excited. Only seen these like three times in my life. It's super rare. And uh, I ran outside and was fortunate enough to catch the entire evolution of this cloud structure. And uh, people for dozens and dozens of miles across Pennsylvania got to see it all at the same time. Social media was flooded with photos of these things afterwards. Uh, check this out. So, mimetic cumulus clouds aren't exactly dangerous in and of themselves. They don't mean severe weather, but they're often found around the anvil clouds that bring you severe thunderstorms and whatnot. They can be found in some other cloud formations or just by themselves, but that's even more rare. One of the reasons Mimatis clouds are so rare is that it takes only the tallest, more mature thunderclouds to reach high enough in the atmosphere in order to form that that anvil. Thankfully, the science behind anvil clouds is relatively simple. So, let me explain a little bit of that to you. Uh, with a severe thunderstorm, right, you've got these powerful updrafts that bring warm, moist air high up into the atmosphere. Eventually, that air collides with the troposphere. It loses its temperature and its upward current, and it starts to spread out flatten out and it forms that anvil. As that supercumulonimbus cloud soars high up into the atmosphere, it reaches about, say, 30 to 50,000 feet and collides with the troposphere. It has less, you know, upward momentum as that air cools, flattens out, and the wind currents start to stretch that flattened portion out. That's how you get the anvil, right? Now, what goes on there is, in general, Mammatus clouds are formed when sinking air cools and condenses as it drops through, you know, different altitudes. But it's more complicated than that. As I said, there are a lot of conflicting theories as to how these things are formed, and in my opinion, several of them make a whole lot of sense. Uh, as water droplets descend through the atmosphere, they start to evaporate, or in the form of ice crystals, as they descend, they evaporate, and it's known as sublimation. When that happens, it basically causes these pouches to form. You know, they drop down, they condense, and they form these pouches, sublimation. Another theory is subsidence of the anvil, which creates a downdraft of cool, moist air. Again, resulting in that beautiful bubble wrap appearance. What I like to think is warm, moist air rises, and as it does so, it starts to lose its momentum as it cools and condenses. At that point, it starts to drop down and meets the warm rising air currents, further causing the original air to condense and cool further. Right at that, that small point where the two temperatures meet, you get this thin layer of stable air, and it creates the appearance of these little bubbles standing still in the sky. Sometimes it lasts, say, 15, 20 minutes, and in some cases it can last an hour. Mamata clouds are actually inverted clouds. It is the only cloud formation that I know of that is formed in the opposite direction. 
instead of going up and forming these clouds, they are coming down and forming them. So we are seeing what normally would be the top of other clouds, only they're inverted. And looking at these, I can't help being reminded of back in my teenage years one night, I had a candle going for several hours and it melted all the way down and there was a big pool of wax. I poured that wax into some cool water just to see what would happen and it, it formed all these formations that looked exactly like Mimatis clouds. And uh, it's just kind of cool. Although the science behind that is the other way around. The wax is warm and the water was cool. In the case of Mimatis clouds, the cloud itself is cool and the surrounding air is warm. <sighs> it is so neat. Mimatis clouds are always a sight to behold and they're particularly stunning early in the morning or later in the evening as the sunlight is at an extreme angle that really brings out the contrast of the contours of these cloud formations. The point I'm trying to make is that while we aren't entirely sure what causes mimatocumulus clouds to form, temperature, moisture, and gravity are key ingredients resulting in stunningly beautiful imagery that is reminiscent of bubble wrap, mammary glands, and yeah, I'm about to do it again. I'm going to bridge the gap this time between meteorology and slime molds because <laughs> the Mimata clouds look very similar to the plasmodial stage of Physarum polycephalum or other myxomycetes. Check it out. Little bubbles dripping down. Looks the same as Mimata clouds, doesn't it? Especially with the setting sun. You get that nice yellowy orange color. Huh. Never fails, does it? If you've managed to stay with me this long in the video, I want to thank you so much. Hats off to you. While you're here, please hit like, maybe comment below, and if you haven't already, definitely subscribe to my channel because it seriously helps me to be able to produce more videos and get out there more and explore new habitats and environments and wildlife. Normally my videos aren't as haphazard as this one, I swear. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, and keep your eyes on the sky. Whether it's daytime or nighttime, there's always something to see. And if you're not looking up, look down, because there's even more stuff down there. See you later. You want to see me do something stupid? Um, but people should like it because it is about and how they are formed. It's controversial as to <sighs> I'm gonna be in so much trouble.